Jeffrey downloads a YouTube blocker. He can no longer watch the videos on YouTube. Yes, finally, he's gonna make some progress. He even has a porn blocker installed on his PC. This is it, this is the time that Jeffrey's actually gonna finally improve himself. Wait, who's that? A mysterious figure uninstalls the blocker from Jeffrey's computer. Who could it be? Who would undermine your self-improvement attempts? There is only one man we can trust to find out the answer for us. Adonis! How dare you sacrifice young Jeffrey's attempts to improve himself? The mysterious figure tries to run away, but he's no match for Adonis, the fastest man on the planet. Adonis sweeps him to the floor and holds him there in a Kimura. He slowly pulls the mask off our perpetrator. Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> so it was Zuck all along ruining Jeffrey's efforts to improve himself. Mystery solved. Well done, Adonis. The first habit that helped me get my life together was weightlifting. This was like the first productive thing I ever did in my life, age 17. And if you've been into lifting or calisthenics recently, you'll know that this is the case. When it's like the first good habit that you do, it really is like the cornerstone that gets you to do other good things. I started weightlifting at age 17 looking like this, 115, 120 pounds. I was so skinny. My wrists and my forearms were skinnier than my sister's. Weightlifting was a beautiful, crucial thing for me. I remember that this is extremely valuable to say. It gave me hope. It gave me optimism. I saw the path ahead of me. Okay, I've started weightlifting. As long as I never quit, I'll build like my dream physique. I felt like that was a guarantee. And so it got me, perhaps for one of the first times in my life, to look forward to the future, to think that I can do something today that will make my future better because I never really understood the concept of working hard in school or anywhere else. It was weightlifting that really started my life. Then the second habit that helped me get my life together was learning. So at age 21, I took an online course which is completely free and it's called The Science of Wellbeing. It was going kind of viral at that time and I saw some people talk about it on Reddit and so I took the course it's online, it's free, you can literally just Google the science of well-being. It's kind of like an online course where you just kind of sit there, you open up the browser and it's almost like YouTube videos where you just let the video play, but it's extremely educational. And so for the first time in my life, I was actually learning. It's very, very fucking sad to hear that, isn't it? I was 21 years old and that was the first time I was learning. I had literally graduated from university and I don't consider any of the things that I learned in the education system actual learning. The pathetic education that I went through was a complete waste of time. But we're not, oh, you're not supposed to say this because education's key. Like education is absolutely key. But the education system, the school, the college, the universities are fucking bullshit. And this is maybe a side tangent. But age 21 is the first time that I actually ever learned anything. I took this course, it changed my life. It's all about mental health. And it kind of explained the real research on how to be happy, on how to have good mental health. And I had never learned these things before. So many of my problems were fixed because I took this course and I implemented to the steps. The third habit that helped me get my life together is one that I learned from the course that we just mentioned. The instructor in the course tells you of the vast benefits of meditation. So the third habit was meditating. And I struggled hard <laughs> trying to meditate when I first started. I literally couldn't even last one minute. And yeah, like every time I say this, everyone starts, oh, I really couldn't last one minute. Oh, that's what he said. <laughs> Shut up. It's not even that funny. I remember struggling hard when I first started to meditate. I downloaded some of those apps and within literally 30 seconds to one minute, I'd be so bored. I'd need more stimulation that I just open my eyes and just cancel the app early. Meditation became a beautiful thing and it became so consistent in my morning routine, just a few minutes every single morning. Eventually I leveled it up to 20 minutes in the morning. What meditation did for me, honestly, the biggest benefit, which is somewhat unexpected, it immediately significantly improved my diet. Perhaps you could probably connect the dots, but when I was researching meditation, oftentimes people were just saying, you know, it's mindfulness and presence and you know, there's this benefit and this one. As soon as I became more mindful, I didn't want to eat that junk that I would usually be eating. And I got so much more pleasure and enjoyment from eating healthy foods. I remember before I started meditating and along with mental illness, like mental health problems, like depression, anxiety, stress, I was a big, big binge eater. It's almost weird for me to say this right now because it's been so long since I binge ate. You know, a lot of people say like, oh yeah, like I ate lots of food. No, no, binge eating is like you eat till you feel fucking sick and then you keep eating. You have this weird need, not just finish the food that you've got in front of you, but to finish everything, to eat everything in sight. And it's heavily, heavily related to anxiety. It's heavily related to like needing a sense of comfort, which you can get from food and feeling full. It's kind of dark actually, but 
I remember there was a guy I coached. I used to do like one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't do it anymore, but there was a guy I coached who was sexually abused as a child and he was overweight, like he was obese. But you know, that was the thing that I was trying to help him with. And I remember once he just said something that really almost, it broke my heart, but he explained so much. We were trying to get, you know, really explain logically, okay, like why do you eat so much? Well, like, you know, he would eat till he was so fucking sick and agitated with himself. And you, I had known about what had happened to him as a child. And just once he just connected the dots and he said like, well, when I eat that much and I'm so full, I feel so like disgusting that it kind of feels like a, a way to protect myself from further sexual abuse. Trauma and abuse and things that mess up your mental health can truly, truly make make you do some like really crazy self detrimental things like binge eating, like drug abuse, like self harming. Meditation, I personally believe is the single best thing you can do to improve on that. The list of benefits of meditation, and this video would be over an hour long if I actually told you the list of benefits. It's just one of those where it's almost like a weird, mm. vague thing where you're not 100% sure if it's working. If I could give you one piece of advice right now, it's start meditating. You know, you follow one of those apps. The app I recommend is called Medito, completely free app. I'm not even like associated with them. I would download an app and I would just follow, you know, five minutes, three minutes, one minute every single morning and just have this kind of perception that yes, as long as I'm doing this, I'm going to be making progress and it will become clear to me soon in the future really relate yourself to like the guy who goes to the gym does the workout and then looks in the mirror and says like well i'm not any thinner or i'm not any like you know more muscular yet well yeah you've been eating shit food and you haven't been exercising for years and years and years maybe decades so to that guy we have to say well yeah go to the gym for three months and then you'll probably see some gains so for you you've been doing the equivalents you've been fucking up your mental health with all this content stimulation with social media with porn for years and years and years and so it's gonna take a couple of weeks at least for you to see something and it's usually someone meditates for two weeks and their life transforms forever the fourth habit is journaling, specifically gratitude journaling. This is so simple. Literally just write down a couple of things that you're grateful for. This puts you in a very positive mindset because for once in your life, you're actually sat there and not striving to want anything else. You're not like thinking about anything else. You're literally just thinking, okay, what am I happy about? What am I grateful that is in my life? It's a very beautiful practice. And when you get more consistent, you'll find that you'll start expressing gratitude just throughout your normal day. It's kind of like a skill. And the higher you level up this skill by simply writing down things or just expressing gratitude or thinking about what you're grateful for the more that it will just naturally come in imagine you just sat there one day and just randomly you get a feeling of gratitude that oh yeah I'm, I'm really grateful to be alive i'm really grateful for my family it's a very beautiful feeling the fifth habit that's changed my life is reading i know that i've already mentioned learning but i'm going to put this as a separate one because i think reading and learning are two of the most important things that you can do as a young man reading is literally like such a high value skill that i'd say over 90 percent of young men aren't doing if you're watching this video right now and you don't currently read books you are going to get destroyed you are going to get dominated by another man who's reading it's as simple as that the woman that you want will be his the money that you want will be his the status that you want will be his you choose stay in this lowly position of like oh well reading's not that shut the fuck up i get aggressive about this because when you realize the roi of reading and then i see that people don't actually read and they choose to just watch fucking netflix and anime and shit and i just think to myself like there is literally the pathway to wealth there is literally the pathway to love it's literally just all there in books all you have to do is just read and then just try to implement those things that you learn and your life changes forever and when people don't read it it honestly pisses me off because i just think why are you missing out on life reading is quite literally like a 10 out of 10 thing i wouldn't speak like this if i didn't preach it get into reading it seems a little bit boring when you first start off it's a bit tricky because your mind is so fucking you can barely read a few sentences before your mind starts thinking about something else reading is a skill right now you're level one in this skill because in the real world when you don't level up a skill you actually lose experience you need to like look yourself in the mirror and have a little bit of hatred towards yourself and say like, fuck, I can't even read. Bro, I read for like three sentences and my mind wanders. What a fucking disgrace. You need to have some aggression about this and literally say to yourself, what a disgrace that I can't and I will not read. What a privilege it is to read and to get the wisdom and knowledge from men who are better than us. And I choose not to read because it's not that fun, because it, it's a little bit hard. Slap some sense into yourself, pick out a couple of books and start reading for an hour a day, every single day for the rest of your life. It's that simple. This is literally how you become rich. Like I was going to make a separate video titled, like obnoxiously titled, the reason why I'm rich and you're broke, simply because I read. That is the one where you can say it's privilege or whatever the fuck you want to say i read the right book at the right time 
and that changed my life forever. The book was The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. It's kind of like a new blueprint to understanding wealth and money. I read it at about age 21 when I was first starting to make money. Like, you know, I was first like working full time jobs after I finished university, I was trying businesses. And just because I read that single book, I never fell into the trap that the majority of like 99% of people do and they're okay making 2K a month, 3K a month. And like, you're probably thinking- Wait, uh, uh, 2K is a month, it's actually pretty good. Bro. Reading changes. I, like, I sound like a dickhead. And yeah, I am. I am, okay? I am. But reading will change your life and you don't have to take my word for it. Either you read and your life improves or you don't and you stay like everyone else. When I think about, I went 20 something years without reading. If I started reading when I was in high school, holy shit. And I'm not talking about reading what your fucking dumb teacher gives to you. Like, fuck that. I'm talking about reading some good books that you see recommended in our space. What's interesting is that what's popular is usually wrong. So whatever your 99% of people recommend is usually wrong. What I found personally is that the the books that are recommended, you know, widely recommended, are actually really, really good. It's really interesting. I think because people who consistently read are in like the top 5% anyway. So, you know, the same books keep getting recommended by the people who read consistently, then you know it's a pretty good book. You don't have to look for like a very weird niche book that no one's recommended because, you know, we want to be like the 1%, like the 1% are the people who read. I hope that makes sense. The sixth habit that helped me get my life together is very interesting. It's failing. I got into the habit of failing, of trying things and failing them. There's a video of mine, which is getting a lot of views right now, and it's titled, I am a failure. It's kind of like a epic montage edit, like, you know, with music and hype and everything. And I describe the process of actually becoming successful. It's constantly just trying and failing and being okay with that failure and then learning from it and then trying again. I think my generation especially has a problem with this. I see perfectionism is like through the roof. It's kind of a weird term perfectionism because it almost seems like a positive thing perfectionism is for pussies like if you if you're a perfectionist you have to be a coward you have to be a pussy i'd say most of my generation is so deathly afraid of failure and if you're afraid of failure you will never become a success and finally the seventh habit one that you can probably guess is uploading content I realized about two years ago that social media is the single greatest opportunity of our generation. This is our generation's gold rush. Uploading content consistently led me to where I am today. At first I was doing it just for the sake of like entrepreneurship and making money online. And slowly and surely when an audience started building up and I got way more purposeful and more driven and more focused, it became more like a movement, a revolution, a revolution of young men who are sick and tired of living normal lives. We've done years of playing video games, of watching porn, of eating shitty junk food and we hated our lives. For years we scrolled on social media because that's the normal thing to do and we hated our lives. I felt these emotions, I felt this sickness, this pain inside of me, this agitation of living like a normal person and I was so fed up with it that I transformed my life forever and I started documenting my process and just coming onto camera and just teaching my learning lessons of living a quite a weird life, detached away from like, not fully detached away from modern technology. You know, I've got my computer on right now and I've got a document open with like today's script and everything, but enough that I don't have social media. I haven't watched porn in years. I don't have dating apps. I don't eat shitty junk food. I don't eat sweets and crisps. Uploading content starts as just a habit that you know, you're just kind of doing to try and make some money. And as soon as you start building up an audience, you start taking it seriously because you realize like, oh fuck, like hundreds of people are watching me, looking up at me. And you really want to start spreading a good message after that. I've seen some people taking my content and re-uploading it onto like their, kind of like what Andrew Tate's done, but they've got like Hamza clips, Hamza shorts, and it's just like videos of me where like, oh, you know, Hamza explains no fat benefits. I've seen people do that and get like quite a lot of views and their channels are monetized. I never copyright anyone who's taken my videos. It's, I wanted to make an announcement. If you've ever wanted to like download my videos and keep them safe in cases like YouTube ever bans me, or if you've wanted to like make your own sort of YouTube account, just re-uploading my own content to like get monetized way quicker than normal, then you can do that absolutely. Absolutely. Like you have full permission to use my content to re-upload it anywhere that you want. <laughs> re-upload it onto Pono, bro. Scroll down right now and click on the subscribe button. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.